Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas. I have two Dollar Tree DIYs for you guys today. So for this first one you're going to need four shadow box type thingies from Dollar Tree. I got all the same color because I didn't want to have to paint them. I like the white and how it's a little bit distressed. And we're going to be cutting out the insides of these. I'm using a utility knife, I think it's called. Um, and I'm just kind of scoring the inside to cut the paper along the edge and then we're going to flip it over and pull off the back piece with some pliers. You can try to unscrew it if you want. I tried unscrewing it um, but the screws didn't really come out very well but it just ripped out just fine with my pliers, um, the little hanging piece on the back. And then I go ahead and go around the back of the little shadow box again with my knife on the back and make sure you get in all the edges so that you are cutting the glue that's attaching it. It was actually pretty easy and then I just popped it out. It's really pretty easy to just pop right out after you kind of score it with the knife. So once you have the middles of all four removed you're gonna go ahead and make a window shape I used some wood glue to attach this. I definitely recommend using wood glue, not hot glue, um, because hot glue will just add bulk and doesn't hold wood very well. Um, I know it takes a lot longer, but it will give you a really, really strong hold. I used this on the edges of the frames, and then I used my staple gun from Walmart. They're pretty cheap, and I really recommend um, investing in a staple gun because they're just really convenient and save me a lot of time. I did end up uh, letting this sit overnight to dry because once I did put the staples in it still wasn't holding it together as well on the front it was kind of coming open when I turned it over so I just let it sit overnight and I put some books on top of it to really hold it down flat and all together. The weight really helps. You probably don't need to do that if you're not using the staples, but when I used the staples, it kind of pulled the back together, so the front was almost coming up a little bit or apart, and I wanted to keep that together as best I could, so I put some heavy books on top, and it really um, did what I was hoping it would do, and it's really, um, really, really sturdy now. I hope that all made sense. I know I stuttered a little bit, but I hope you can see when I turn it over here how it's kind of opening up a little bit in the middle and along the edges. Um, but I just put some heavy books on top of that and then it really held together with the glue in the morning. So we are gonna use the inside pieces that we took out. I'm just removing that piece from the front and we're gonna actually use the back of the bigger pieces. So I just removed all of those and then I removed the stickers from the back if you want, you can hold some heat up to this with like a hair dryer or a lighter and your stickers should peel off more smoothly. I wasn't having too much trouble. Um, just on a couple, I did it did get a little bit rough, but I wasn't worried about it because I'm going to be distressing this a lot. I want this really, really distressed, so I wasn't worried about it being a little bit rough at all. So now we have some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant and I'm just covering all four of these. With that I just did one coat. You could do two if you're looking for a more clean look because um, this didn't completely cover the whole thing but with all the stressing, the distressing I'm going to do to this, it's not going to be noticeable so I just ended up doing one coat. Now that all four of my squares have dried, I'm just using some stencils that I got from Walmart a long time ago. I think they still have them there though, but just um, pick whatever font you want. And I went ahead and used a pencil to trace this out, and then I used a paint pen, and then I fill in the lines. You can definitely just um, dab the paint over the stencil if that's what you like to do. I've tried it before, and I just really... I don't know, I don't like it, it makes my stencils messy and sometimes it bleeds under, I'm probably just not doing it right. <laughs> I mean I've had success with it before but I just prefer this method um, and 
I just like to go over it with the paint marker after the pencil just so I can see my lines better and it helps me kind of I don't know it kind of guides me a little bit better than if I just use the pencil line I can see the pencil line it's a little bit hard to see um, on camera but I could definitely see the pencil line but I just like to go over it with my paint pen because it just seems to give me a thicker line um, to draw the paint in with like with my brush and I just really like doing it that way <laughs> and that might be helpful for you too if you're if you have a little bit of trouble staying in the lines especially if it's the same color like on this one I'm gonna use a white paint pen and then I'm gonna put white in the middle you don't have to get so close to the edge and so precise if you have the exact color that you're going for Now once I have all my letters traced on, I'm going in with this Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster and I'm using a small brush. It's angled um, and I always pick a smaller size than I think I'll need because when you're brushing like the bristles or the, is that what they're called, like hairs on your brush, they'll like fan out so they'll be wider than you expected than it looks just looking at it. So. You want to pick a smaller brush than what you think you're going to need. At, at least that's how, <laughs> that's what I've found in my experience anyway. I ended up doing two coats of the white paint on here. Now that these have all dried, I'm going in with my elephant gray again. And I'm just dry brushing that onto the letters to make them look distressed. And what I do here is I just get some on my brush just on the very end and then I'm brushing it onto my paper towel so there's really nothing left in the brush. That way I, I just don't like the streak marks that I see on a lot of distressing so I get as much of it off as I can and then I go in with it. And then if I want more I just keep adding more until I have it the way I like it but I just don't want to see any brush streaks on there. And then I'm also just putting a little bit on the frames as well. And then next I'm just going back in with that Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I'm just dry brushing that onto the gray part of my squares to make them look a little bit more distressed. I like things really, really distressed. But of course, it's up to you how much you want to distress it or not at all. If you like the clean look, um, that's awesome too. So that's the fun part of crafting is you get to make it your own and exactly the way you want it to look. So next, I'm just flipping over my frames and I'm pushing those uh, middle parts back into the frame. They fit pretty snugly in there. So I didn't really glue them down except for just a little bit on a few of the edges just to make sure they didn't fall out a little bit in the middle and then a tiny bit on each edge. But I didn't go along the whole edge or anything. Um, a little tip that I would give you that I learned along the way with the top right one, it was actually a little too big the way that I had it in there because these are not all exactly the same size. They're close to it. But not exactly, so I actually had to cut off a little bit of the top of the right one to fit it in there. Um, so maybe before you start painting, just make sure they all fit in your squares. Um, and see, you know, which way you want to paint the letter on. Because it might be longer one way than the other. So just make sure of that unless, um, you know, so you don't have to be cutting off the tops or anything later like I did it might save you a little extra step and I think this turned out really cute so next we have our little directional sign this was also a sign from Dollar Tree so we're starting out with this um, little like luau sign and I'm just standing off all of the glitter um, I would just use the back of it but when I pull out the staples that were holding the ribbon in it had some holes in the back um, so I decided I wanted to use the front of the signs and it took a minute but when I got all of the glitter sand off they're really nice and smooth and easy to paint on so 
So next I'm just removing the ribbon from the back. I didn't even need any um, staple remover for this. All I had to do was just pull on the ribbon and pull the staples right out. As you can see in the beginning, I'm keeping my thumb over the staples. I suggest you do that if you use this method because you don't want your staples flying out anywhere into the room where you don't know where they are and you might step on them like I did at one point. <laughs> so I would just keep your thumb on top as you're pulling them out and it, they come out very easily. So using the same Waverly chalk paint and the colored plaster, I'm just giving these a full coat. And I still did see a little bit of the color peeking through, so I did end up giving them a second coat. Um, but these painted really easily after I sanded that glitter off. Now that our two coats of paint have dried, we're just going in with our stencil. Um, I'm, I chose the words barn, garden, and pond. You can obviously choose any words you want that would go best with your decor, um, but I thought that would be cute. Like, I tried to think of words that would, things that would maybe be um, like on the farm, so I thought that was really cute. And I believe this stencil is from Michaels. I've had it for a long time. And as you can see, I have used um, the paint just dabbing it on top of it before. But I really didn't like it because then I had to wait for each one to dry before I could do the next one. Otherwise, laying the stencil on top of it might smear it and all that kind of stuff. So I just decided to go ahead and use my regular method that I have always done that's so tried and true <laughs> for me. And I just went ahead and used my pencil and then another paint pen. And this time I used a gray paint pen because I just have a lot of paint pens on hand. Um, and that worked out perfectly for me. It was a really nice outline to paint in the letters. So now we're going back in with that Waverly Elephant chalk paint and I'm just filling in the letters. So I'm just going back in with some of that white paint now and dry brushing that onto the letters. I like everything, like I said, to be super distressed and um, old looking and I think this would look a little more realistic like it would have been outside um, at a farm. So I'm going in with some of that white and just distressing the letters and then I go back in with some of the gray and distress the white part of the sign. If this were just a regular wooden sign, of course you could distress it by sanding it, but since this has a bunch of colors underneath, I don't want to use any sandpaper to distress it because we don't want those bright colors showing up under our neutral decor. Then for the stake for my sign, I'm just using a piece of scrap wood that my dad gave me, but you could use a paint stirring stick if you don't have scrap wood, um, and that would work just as well. And I'm just painting it with a gray elephant chalk paint, and then I didn't want to wait for it to dry. I was in a hurry to finish this, it was kind of late at night, 
um, but I did want it to be a little bit distressed so I did go in with some of the white chalk paint um, so it looks a little more um, like mixed into the gray paint but you can still see a little bit of the distressing when I go over it with that white paint. I'm not going to be putting this outside so I'm just using some hot glue um, just for video purposes to show you guys how this could look. If you are going to be putting it outside I would suggest sealing it first um, and then using a stronger glue like wood glue or E6000 so that it will stay together for you. Um, but I just used some hot glue and I just positioned these signs a little bit at an angle so that they would really look like they're just out on the farm. Um, I think it turned out really cute. I hope you guys liked it too. I did put a few pictures of Brie at the end of this video. Um, I know not everyone gets as excited about every little thing that she does um, like I do. I know a lot of people have kids already and they've been through this. Um, but she is my first baby, so I do really get excited with her growth, and I figure I can put it at the end of the video. That way, if anyone is interested, um, maybe she'll brighten your day too. I feel like um, she makes me happy. She makes my day, so if I can share that with anyone else, I think that's great. But I just put it at the end of the video so that you can watch the whole DIY first and then if that's the only part you were interested in you can just click off the video but I hope you enjoyed these tutorials um, let me know which DIY was your favorite if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to see more DIYs like these I also have all my social media linked down in the description box so don't forget to go follow me on all my social media platforms You'll um, get to see pictures and things of projects that I did that I don't always post on YouTube. Um, so make sure to go follow me there. Thanks for watching. Bye!